Okay, good morning. Um, I'm Christina Haggerty. I'm a serial pathologist based at the Pendleton Station. And um, this is our new plot combine that we've had for one harvest season now. And it has been absolutely amazing. So um, it's a Zern 110. Uh, Zern purchased the old Hagee company out, out of Germany. So a lot of the original Hagee mechanics now work for Zern, which is pretty cool. Um, these machines, when they're treated properly, can last forever. So my colleague out of Montana, he's had one for 20 years and the original motor is Volkswagen. So when they need a new motor, they usually go, go to the Midwest or go to Canada and they'll take a Volkswagen motor out of a retired uh, hockey rink Zamboni and, and swap them out. So anyways, if we, if we'll just treat this super well and I hope to have it for honestly the rest of my career. Um, a couple really interesting things about it is um, we are, to my knowledge, uh, the first customers to in a developed nation to have this machine. They're very popular in developing nations because of their simplicity. So very, very limited electronics and uh, very, very simple metalwork can repair most parts. And then on top of that, um, you'll notice the, the color scheme, uh, green and yellow, which is pretty cool for me because that's the combine color that my family farm runs. And uh, we can use John Deere parts interchangeably to repair most things. Um, whereas our previous systems, um, we were waiting on parts just forever to come in from, from Europe. Um, so that's been great. And then I'll walk over here. Um, this is a, a simple load cell behind this uh, sheeting. And so as we're harvesting, the grain drops into the load cell and then uh, we get instant yield from each plot. And then we just take a subsample right out of this bin um, here. And the rest of the sample goes into the bulk tank and this allows us to leave the bulk grain with the producer if they'd like, or we can offload it into a grain truck. So it just makes it so much simpler. Um, it's quite a bit safer than, um, this update is quite a bit safer than our other machine, which is all, all, always a good thing. And um, another thing to mention is we've gone from a harvest crew of six to a harvest crew of two, which is awesome. And um, what else to mention? What about test weights, Christina? Does it do that? So the question is about test weights. It doesn't do test weight. We only get uh, yields. So we take the subsamples uh, back to the station and then we run it through our um, NIR unit. And that gives us protein, test weight, and moisture. Um, which leads me to another awesome thing about this machine is the grain samples that come out of it are clean enough to go right into our protein analyzer. And before that, we had to take each bag and clean them prior to running proteins. So hence going from that harvest crew of six to a harvest crew of, of two student workers. Um, what else to mention? So OSU has three Zern machines. Uh, the, the pathology machine was purchased by the College of Ag, Oregon State College of Ag, so I thank them tremendously for purchasing this. Um, Oregon Wheat Commission kicked in monies for variety testing. The Sherman Station Endowment also supported this purchase, and then the Wheat Breeding Program had additional funds um, to purchase their unit. So at Seabark, with the pathology program and variety testing having twin combines, we've got that functional redundancy. So if one machine were to go down, we've got another one that both crews know how to use to make sure that we get plots harvested in a timely manner. Um, these machines allow us to release data much faster than previously. And then um, beyond that, not having to clean samples before our protein analysis, the, the less time we're handling samples um, means 
the less opportunity to make mistakes. And so when you're running thousands of plots and we got a lot of numbers going on, the, the simpler things are, the better. Um, what else to mention? Um, let's see, we've got a five foot header and then our, so we've got our driver sits up here. A platform extends out here when we arrive to the harvest location. And then we have our sample bagger. This chair just bolts into the platform and then um, we just bag those subsamples. Um, sorry about my phone here. Yeah, questions? Yes. That's what the chairs do, swing it out there. Absolutely. So the platform extends down and our sampler, instead of walking beside the machine, is, is sitting, which is a lot safer because before that we would have two student workers switching off and with the, the rear steering it can create some, some safety challenges that are really less of So basically, so the question is about how the yield system works. And so as the grain feeds in, drops down into the load cell, the load cell will give us a weight. And then once that's been completed, we get a flicker on the screen that the driver can see. So once that happens, then the driver presses a button and that grain flows from the load cell just through here and we just put a simple PVC tube into this collection area and that goes into a bag for us to look at protein and test weight and moisture. Um, there So what we have to do in order to get the yield is measure plot length and area. So with the five foot header, for example, Larry Lucher and I usually run 45 to 50 foot plots. So we know what proportion of an acre that is. And then we get a, you know, kilograms per square area and then can calculate yield. Yeah. Um, they're really easy to clean, so when we're moving from different on-farm locations, we're able to really thoroughly clean the combine out if there are any weed issues, so we're not moving weeds from, from field to field. That's another really nice thing about it. And about the, the comment that you mentioned that this, you don't need to clean the, um, the samples compared to the other So I think it's, um, the question is about how, how this machine is able to clean the samples. And this machine, if you look on the straw walkers, below the straw walkers, there's a, a double sieve system, whereas the other machines have one sieve. So we have an additional sieve in there. And then beyond that, we've got a couple um, more intricate settings that we can play with to make sure we're getting really good clean samples uh, based on the conditions. And I believe you are, you are also harvesting your plots that are pretty clean of weeds, right? Yes. So it would be interesting to... No, thank you, Christina. Yeah. You can drive, Judith. <laughs> yeah, I may, I may uh, ask you to, to have, have it sometime if you don't mind. Yeah, of course. Anytime. Um, and then beyond that, a lot of the things that we're measuring in pathology are really, really small nuances. And so in order for us to detect very subtle differences in yield, um, this machine is just, it's got, it, it's got more, um, we're able to get more detailed data, if that makes sense. Just, you know, to be able to detect differences among our treatments.
So, Christina, you probably mentioned it already, but what's your favorite research project that you're using the combine for right now? Oh my goodness. Um, well, even though Larry Lucher is here, I'm not just saying this because Larry's here, but all of my work in, in Morrow County in collaboration with Larry, working on Fusarium crown rot, it's such a tough disease to work on and we get such minor differences between treatments that a machine like this is extremely helpful to really help us nail down what we're seeing in the field. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, they're just interesting. You got like two lip screens and then a punch screen underneath. So, yeah, that's got to be totally accurate. You yeah. Know, one more than we have. So, yeah, amazing. You want to ask me a tough mechanical question, Kyle? Does it have any grease dirts? Oh, yeah. There, I believe there are five. Um, five grease cirques, and um, some of them are a real pain in the butt to find. So I always miss a couple. <laughs> and yeah. So what is that? Um, it's the um, Kyle. You explain it. It's the where you. It's the spot where you have a little grease cirque that you put your grease gun on and pumps grease into the cell. Okay. So everything else is sealed bearings then. Yes, with the, the self-lubricating bearings, there's there's quite a few of those on this machine um, that I don't expect to have to change out for some time. Yeah. What's the cost of the machine? Oh, you're looking at $150,000. And so, for example, um, at WSU and a couple, and, and the OSU breeding program, they have Zern 150s, and that's uh, around a quarter million. Um, but with that cost comes additional um, electronics that, ha you know, can create additional challenges. And so even though this was a great bang for our buck um, and it can just get the job done great for us, it's also extremely simple. And should it break down, we're able to address that really quickly so we can keep harvest moving. How many of these machines did, did you get, the 110s? We have two one tens that live at Seabark, one for variety testing and one for pathology. And so this year, almost all plots are going to be ready to go within the next two weeks. And so it's great to have that functional redundancy so that we can have both machines cutting. Mm -hmm. How many bushels in the... Oh my goodness, I believe it's a 50 bushel bulk tank. Good question. I think that's about all I, I have to, to share about that. And last but not least, we have a half inch of clearance between um, the, uh, tr the trailer here. So <laughs> it's a lot of fun to, to trailer up. Yep.